the Tall Ships Wales Trust actually started off about 30 years ago, and it was initially called the Tall Ships Race Council. The charity was set up because the Tall Ships event came to Milford Haven, and so a group of people got together and set up this Tall Ships Race Council, which later on changed its name to the Tall Ships Wales Trust. I think it changed its name in 2000. So what we would like to do as a charity is reconnect people in the coastal communities with their maritime past and with the heritage of the river and of the coastal area and of the ports. The Tall Ships Wales Trust enables people in West Wales to get to go on sailing ships and to have sailing voyages and it either helps through subsidising or raising funds to get people that wouldn't otherwise get to go on the ship to have a voyage on a sail training voyage. We don't have a resident um, permanent ship with us here in Pembrokeshire. We have no um, sail training opportunities, so we have to actually bring ships from somewhere else to us in Pembrokeshire. And so what we want to do is to bring the ship to the people of Pembrokeshire so they can actually have an experience of it and then aspire to get on the water and go further. If you're involved in a voyage, you've got a range of experiences where you're working with other people, you're having to communicate. It's a real social leveller because um, it doesn't really matter where you come from. You may or may not be sick. You may or may not be competent. You may be terribly academic. However, you may be absolutely hopeless when it comes to hoisting sails or having a sense of how to park your ship. So there's, there's a real social level and, and it requires complete teamwork and everyone has to be involved to actually sail the ship from A to B and to make it the passage safe. So it has all sorts of opportunities for group work and personal development. The skipper and the crew and the mates of a sail training organisation and a vessel are very special individuals. They have a real sense of how to engage youngsters, to bring out the best in them, how to manage anxieties, how to help them join in, how to help them feel useful. And they can find a useful role for everybody on board the ship so everybody will have come out having achieved something. So this is what they do. They're specialists in terms of making sure everybody will get the best experience out of the voyage. They'll have all learnt something, they'll have all made friends, they'll have all been useful, and they'll have all been treated with respect, and they'll have been given responsibility and opportunities to take risks. Obviously, you might have a rope tied on, you know, but you'd, get, you'd have some sort of mechanism to keep you safe if you went up the mast, but people would have these opportunities. It's not only the vessel and the sailing, it's the skipper and the crew that facilitate and enable the people on board to have this positive experience. I think a ship can bring to the whole community, whatever age, it can bring a sense of wonder. A ship like Johanna Lucretia is spectacular. She's, she's a beautiful sailing ship, she's traditional, and there's something awe-inspiring about actually seeing her in full sail. That's the impact it has on people when they see her. Although it was actually built in the 20th century, it's a topsail schooner. It's the sort of ship you would have seen sailing around the coast in the 19th century. There would have been hundreds up and down the coast in West Wales. People living in Pembroke Dock are living in a coastal community. People living in Pembrokeshire were surrounded by sea. However, our connection to the sea has been severed. Like people don't earn their livelihoods on the waterway. However, I talked to people my age and they said that when they were children, they used to row up and down, cross the river, go on the boats. In the 50s and up to the 70s, even, they would have been working on the chain ferry. There would have been a ferry coming and going from Hobbs Point. There would have been lots more ships and boats around. There would have been more fishing and there would have been more cargo transported by sail and by motorboat. Now, it's become rare occurrence to see a ship. 
I work for the Toolships Wealth Trust as a coordinator, and I have two roles. In my nine and a half days a month, I apply for funding and I organise things. Our funding has come from Pembrokeshire County Council, Pembroke Dock Town Council, some from the lottery, and we've had some sponsorship from a local company called Dale Sailing. Once this event is over, we have no money. We have no money to pay me to apply for more money, and we have no more money to bring ships. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to raise funds through donations, and we've created a Just Giving account. We've got a new website, the Tall Ships Wales, and on our website will be a link to donate. One day of the tall ship Johanna Lucretia is going to cost £1,400. It's quite an expensive business. So we need donations to be able to bring back ships in the future in order to tick the charity over so that we'll have the capacity to apply for more funds and do more things in the future. One of the advantages of actually going on a ship and sailing on the water is you get a different perspective of your life back on land, on shore. So on board the ship, you will be able to have a perspective of Pembroke Dock from the water, which contextualises where you're from and how your town fits into the geography of the place. It gives a different perspective and it shifts perceptions of people. It shifts their understanding of kind of who they are. Oh, the top and bottom are parallel. Yeah. There's evidence to support the idea that being on, in or beside the water or under the water improves well-being, is good for body, mind and spirit. This isn't just a modern flaky idea. It's incredibly well documented. So the idea of being on the water can actually, after a very short sort of immersion into the experience of being on the tall ship, can improve well-being, can ease anxiety, um, reduce stress. It can put things into perspective. As I say, if you're looking back at your life from the water, it shifts the perspective of your life in Pembroke Dock or in, in Pembrokeshire or in Nayland or wherever you're from. And it gives you an opportunity to take stock. But actually, the experience of being on the water is also calming and helps people feel better, really. <laughs> 